Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the solution for question 4 for the Jan 2021 POA paper 2. If you want to see the other solutions to this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check out those other videos. And with that, let's get into this question. Okay, so you're going to notice a bit of a slightly different layout, top and bottom, as opposed to side by side, because this question required a cash book. And as you could see after, after my, what is that, my left? <laughs> All right, um, you're going to see a cash book. And of course, the cash book requires room horizontally. And if you look above, right above there, you're going to see that the question also requires some horizontal real estate. So with that being said, I hope that this is big enough for everyone to see. Give me some feedback. If it wasn't, let me know how I could fix it. And yeah, let's take a read of the question so we could um, see how it goes. All right, so let's start. So it says top here, right? On 1st December 2020, Sheba's bank balance was, credit, was 3,700 credits. Right, so a bank is an asset. Assets are supposed to have debit balances. So the fact that it says the bank balance was 3,700 credit implies it's an overdraft, right? So which is a liability, and of course liabilities are brought down, have, have balances brought down on the credit side. The transactions for the month of December 2020 were as follows. So we have a bunch of transactions. Let's do the first thing and put in that opening balance on the credit side here, okay? Now let's take a read of um, the next, well, the first transaction, I guess you could say. So it says received and banked a check, 10,950 from M. Merrick. A credit customer okay so if we receive the check our bank account is going up bank is an asset and to record an increase in an asset you have to debit the asset account so we're going to go on the debit side but there's something else here. it says he had deducted a trade discount of 270 ah so this is for the people who really know what they're doing trade discount is not recorded in the books it is deducted on the invoice and the amount after the deduction is the amount that is used for double entry. So again, trade discount is not recorded in the books. It is only recorded on the invoice. So this 270 is irrelevant to what we are going to be doing. And we are simply going to debit the bank for 10,950. And of course, we're going to put the details that it came from M. Merrick. All right. Next, we have here paid a check to Free Limited, a supplier, in full settlement of his account of 4,800 less 2% cash discount. Okay, so let's unpack this. If we pay a check to somebody, our bank account is going down. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit that account, the asset account. Well, credit bank. Now it says in full settlement of his account of 4,800 less 2% cash discount. The cash discount is what is recorded in the, in the column here in the, in the cash book. Right? And in this case, it's going to be discount allowed. Right? Now you're noticing I don't have um, whether it's discount allowed or discount received in my cash, but that's because the format in the actual question didn't have it. So I wanted to recreate uh, as close as possible um, the actual format in the question paper so you could have seen what you were dealing with if you didn't have the question paper. So we are paying a check, so we're going to go on the credit side. Now you need to work out your discount. 2% of 4800 I believe, is $96. And you have to minus or subtract that 96 from the 4,800. That's going to give you, I think, 4,704. So the bank, the bank figure is going to say 4,704, and the discount is going to say 96. All right, so let's put that in um, right there. 4,704, 96. And of course, it came from free limited. All right, so we paid free. That, it, that is why it is on the credit side of the bank account. Well, it says cash book. All right, next, we have Harry, a credit customer, paid his debt of 5,000 by check after deducting a cash discount of 5%. Okay, cool. So in this case here, Harry is paying us. So we are receiving money. Our bank account is going up. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So we're going to go on the debit side. Now he paid 5,000 after deducting a cash discount of 5%. So we have to find 5% of 5,000 and subtract it. And that's going to be discount allowed. Right? The discount from free was discount received. So 5% of 5,000, um, I believe that is going to be, what boy, 250. So when you subtract 250 from 5,000, you're going to get 4,750. Let's see if that, let me see if my arithmetic is good. Yeah, there you go, right? So 4,750 under the bank column, 250 under the discount column, and details, of course, is Harry. And yes, please put your date. Okay, let's scroll down. Uh, we only have a few more transactions here. So some simple ones. On the 20th, we received a check 
receive 4,000 by check from D Armstrong. So again, if we receive a check, the bank account is going up. You're going to need to debit the bank account because it is an asset. And when an asset increases, you debit the asset account. So, right, 4,000 under the bank column, D Armstrong, 20th December. Okay. Next, we paid utilities by check. So once we make a payment, our bank account is decreasing. To record a decrease in bank, you have to credit the bank account because bank is an asset. And to record a decrease in bank, an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see 1,200 utilities, 21, 21st December. Ah, this is an interesting one. The bank returned the check received from D. Armstrong as he did not have sufficient funds. So if someone pays you with a check, but they don't have enough money in their bank account to honor the check or for the check to clear, the bank sends you back the check and you now have to go and talk to D. Armstrong. So this is called a return check or a bounce check or an NSF check. And we record it on the credit side because initially, remember when D. Armstrong paid us, we debited our account because money came in. But if the check bounced, it means we didn't actually get the money. So we have to undo the debit. And to undo a debit, you have to go on the opposite side of the account. Right? And that's going to require a credit. Okay. So we basically just kind of reverse any transaction to make it seem like it never happened. So D. Armstrong still owes us that money. Now, um, if you do some quick, quick arithmetic, like if you want to pause and try and balance off the account face, so that's fine. We're going to get a, a balance carried down from the credit side. Right? And it's going to be brought down on the debit side. But let me just... Um, right, so your totals now... You, you do not balance off your discount accounts. Eh? The discount columns are totaled. They are not balanced off against each other. Right? They are sent to the discount received and discount allowed account respectively. Right? So discount allowed sorry, is on the debit side. Discount received is on the credit side. Okay, and of course, you bring down your balance, 6096 All right, cool. So that's the first part of the question, and there are a few more parts. Right? That was part of 11 marks. So remember what I've been saying, right? One and a half marks. One and a half minutes per mark. So this is about 15 minutes for this particular part of the question. All right? And if we scroll down, you're going to see the format. So you're going to see, I know it's sideways, but it says discount and bank, right? Details and date. And then bank and discount, details and date. So again, they didn't label which discount column was which. <clears throat> All right. So let me just maximize this piece so you can see everything you're dealing with. So it says, Sheba's books show a total discount received of 500 for the 11 months from January 1st to 30th November, okay? Prepare the discount received account for the year ended 31st December 2020. Show the year, year end transfer to the appropriate financial statement. Okay, so we are still dealing with Sheba. So this is, is kind of following on from the, from the previous part of the question. So they're telling you that the discount received for the 11 months from Jan to November was totaling 500. So in December, which is the month, if you, well, we're gonna see the cash book shortly. So the month in which we are doing a cash work is, was December. So the balance brought down in the discount received account for December was 500. So we have to show the discount received for December and the transfer to the appropriate financial statement. Now, let me explain what that means. So first things first, let's pull back up the um, cash book. Right, so you see the cash book down here and the column on the credit side, that is your discount received. Because when you make payments, that's when you receive discount. And technically, it's classified as a revenue account. So revenue accounts have credit balances. So this 96 here will be credited to the discount received account. So hold on, let me actually, right, so we scroll down here now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the balance brought down on the credit side. Because remember I said, discount received is a revenue. Revenue accounts have credit balances. Now, the cash book showed a total discount received of 96. So that's going to be transferred to the credit of the discount received account. So therefore, the balance carried down at end will simply be the total 596. So that's going to be brought down here. Now, the question also says to show the transfer to the appropriate financial statement. All revenues and expenses are transferred to the income statement at the end of a financial period. Expenses go across as debits because they are debit items. And revenues go across as credits because they are credit items. So if you are transferring it as a credit to the income statement, you have to debit the account where it's coming from. All right. So to that end, we're going to see a debit in this account that says income statement. All right. And then when you total it up, both the debit and the credit side are equal to so the account balances off. And it's closed off. They actually call that a closing entry. 
because the account is closed off. What that means is that it's canceled to zero. There's no, no longer any value or any money in that account. All right, so expense and revenue accounts are known as nominal accounts. Nominal accounts are also called sometimes temporary accounts or at least considered to be temporary because at the end of every financial period, they are closed off to the income statement. And then in the next financial period, they kind of start fresh with the revenue earned and the expenses incurred for that period. Cool, so let's scroll down here now. Okay, so we have a little thing here. It says, identify the ledger in which the following accounts will be posted. So the account, discount received, and you have free, then you have Harry. So again, this is kind of continuing from the same question above. So the discount received account is a revenue account. That will be found in your general ledger. So you can see general across there. Now free, who was free in the context of the question? Let's go back up to the cash book and take a look. So we're noticing free on the credit side here, which means we paid free. And again, if you want, you could actually scroll back up to the question. Right, and it says here that we paid free in full settlement of his accounts. So this implies we owed free money. So therefore, free was a creditor. And creditor's accounts are found in the creditor's ledger or more popularly known as the purchaser's ledger. And Harry, so Harry, it says right, right here, Harry is a credit customer. So a credit customer is a debtor. And debtor's personal accounts are found in the debtor's ledger, otherwise known as the sales ledger. All right. So that was relatively straightforward. I mean, if you didn't know those things, well, now you know, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, so we did that piece. We did this piece. That was three marks. So about four and a half minutes for that. Oh, this one was also four and a half minutes. So that together, those should have spent, you should have spent nine minutes on those two pieces there. Uh, right. Oh, this is an interesting one. So let me scroll down here so you can see. All right. So it says, Sheba provided the following summary of his utility expenses for the year ended 31st December 2020. So on 1st of January, sorry, let me, let me try that again. Right. On the 1st of January, we had accrued expenses 1670. So you had an accrued balance brought down. An accrued expense is classified as a current liability because it is money you owe. So let's... Um, now, just before we jump into that, it says here, it says to state the amount of utilities expenses, which will be recorded in the income statement and statement of financial position. Now, basically what they want is the income statement figure and the balance sheet figure, right? Statement of financial position equals balance sheet. So I opted to do a T account because I found it was the simplest way to communicate the calculation. So that's why you're seeing a T account down there. So again, let's, let's just highlight this item here. So accrued expenses at the start will be brought down on the credit side. Now, it also says total utility expenses paid, $89.50. So when you pay utility expenses, you're going to debit the expenses. Because remember, if you're paying them, your cash book is decreasing. And to record a decrease in cash or bank, you're going to have to credit cash or bank. Why? Because cash and bank are both assets. And when assets decrease, you credit the asset account. And if you're crediting the asset account, you're debiting whatever you're paying. Um, right. <laughs> Cool, so total utility expenses paid. And then finally, it says at end, um, prepaid utility expenses. So it means therefore that the utility expenses at end will end up being prepaid. So we went from owing money for utilities to paying too much. And in order to show that, the, oh, sorry, that is classified as an asset. And assets are balances brought down on the debit side. But before you can be brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side. So what that means, sorry, hold on, all right? So what that means now is that the missing figure is the income statement figure. So when you balance off your T account, you're going to get 6,720 for the income statement figure. Right? And if, you want, if you're not too clear on how that happened, just feel free to rewind and check it again, eh? or put a comment in the comment section. As a matter of fact, I do believe I have a couple of a video or two on how to deal with expense accounts for accruals and prepayments. So once I remember, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. All right. So the income statement figure is the one marked income statement at 6720. And the balance sheet figure as well, the balance carried down. That's the 560. Okay. And finally, it says identify the document that is sent to a debtor to indicate the amount owed to a business. Um, right, so I, I put statement of account because um, 
you might say invoice, but an invoice would give you for, in my opinion, a specific transaction. Uh, I don't know that invoices state previous balances. I don't think that they do. I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> but I mean, sometimes things change and I may not have found out when, this have, when, when they had a meeting and they changed this, okay? But um, if you know that that's not the correct answer, please feel free to message me in the comments below or on Instagram. Okay guys, so there you have it. That is the solution for question four for the Jan 2021 PUA paper two. So if you guys found this helpful, please leave a like on the video. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section below if you have any questions, if I made any mistakes, etc, etc. Alright guys, so that's about it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.